I'm Scott Allen Miller. It is the 10th of October, 2023. This is my vlog of daily life living in Nicaragua. One of the great things about doing my show on the GoPro is that I don't have to worry about the rain. It is a gorgeous rainy afternoon. Believe it or not, this should be bright sunlight, but the rain is just, it's perfect. It's coming down. I'm out for a walk. The camera's not gonna overheat because it's got a nice cool rain coming down on it. I feel great. This is fun. And today we're gonna be discussing the fourth world. We're gonna get to that right after the bump. my audience who don't know, I'm a pluviophile. That means I am a lover of rain and few things describe me more. Although my daughter Luchana describes me in three words or three, uh, three phrases. I like the color orange, I like foxes, and I over explain everything, but she's leaving out how much I love the rain. That's really the thing that's missing. Beyond that, that really is me. That sums it up. Uh, <laughs> and uh, today is just absolutely gorgeous. It's hard to show a really wonderful rain. I hope you hear the thunder going on. Like, this is fantastic. It's so often here in Nicaragua, when we get a rain, we have like bright skies and this warm, like heat wave that comes through and it's a little bit much and then it just dumps on you. But sometimes we get this nice steady rain like you would get back home in New York, for example, and it's the most wonderful thing. I love big storms, like they're fantastic, but I miss the steady rains of New York or Romania. Uh, those are my absolute favorites. But my all time favorite storms are actually Panama City. Just for those of you who are wondering, my favorite storms, they get such unbelievably violent storms just rolling over Panama City and they will just have black clouds just pour over the high rises and absorb them. And it all disappears as it goes out into the Pacific. So beautiful. So just, it's, it's the place to be. Love Panamanian storms, but our Nicaraguan storms are very good as well. So today is Tuesday morning. Good morning. I hope you have your coffee. I hope you're joining me for this. And I'm, if the audio isn't perfect on this today, it's never perfect, right? My audio is pretty crap. Uh, I'm on the GoPro, obviously, but with no mics or anything because of the rain. I can do the great video and stuff. It's that to, in order to stay waterproof, because I'm actually standing in the rain, um, I've got to uh, I've got to take off all the microphones. They're they're not waterproof, so. If it doesn't sound great, I apologize, but I am generally impressed with the GoPros. Their microphones are very good, even without like the media kit or any add-on boom or anything. So I'm, I'm pretty confident in doing these as long as the wind doesn't pick up. That's where it suffers the most. This is fantastic. I'm really glad that I managed to time this. I mean, I'm, I'm scrambling to get the show done for the day as I often am, but really happy that I timed this, that I got a whole bunch of editing done. I've got, by the time you're seeing this, hopefully in a few hours, there's no way it's gonna be up by the time you're seeing this if you're one of my first viewers. Um, I've got a really long video on a channel that I help with, which is at Nicaroomba. So go to youtube.com slash at Nicaroomba. Uh, and that is a channel of Nicaraguan live music, concerts and stuff like that. There was a tribute show that we recorded a few weeks ago, uh, put on by the remaining uh, uh, members of Dejo, which we see all the time. They played my birthday and stuff. We went to Via and Via, recorded an entire concert of theirs, but then everyone came over and did a full on interview uh, here at the estate and um, really cool, right? Like super interesting and um, it's all in Spanish. So I'm gonna do my best to get it translated, but that should be up. So at least go watch the concert watch the interview of just to see my my camera work because this was triple cameras and miking the whole thing like it was a, it was a lot of work and i really enjoyed doing it and i'm looking forward to doing a lot more of it it's stuff i like to do so that should be up sometime today i'm working really hard to get to that but i worked on that all day managed to change my clothes get outside and just made it for the first drops of this beautiful rain I'm just loving it. Okay, <laughs> the chances that I would get out for this perfect rain to walk and do the show, so unlikely, so I I'm excited. My topic today 
and, and people are gonna find this weird, but we say this sometimes, and I think it's really something that people need to understand. For a lot of you who are coming from North America and wondering, is Nicaragua gonna be for you? Are you gonna love it? And, and the answer is maybe, right? You gotta be realistic. It's very different than what you're used to. It is a completely different place. Everything's different. The culture, the music, the food, the rules, the, the way that people do things, the expectations, the pace of life, the weather, it's just different. So brace yourself that there's going to be a lot of things that change. And uh, I bet a lot of them you will love. And I bet some of them you will hate. And it's all about finding the balance. So, so that's the first thing. But in understanding the Nicaraguan experience, especially if you're coming from North America, if you're coming from Europe, I think, I think Nicaragua is a lot more sensible to you. It may be more exotic because it's far away. It's a, it's a very different part of the world. Whereas like from the United, like if you're coming from like South Padre in Texas to here is really not very far at all. Uh, so it, it lacks a little bit of exoticism there. But if you're coming from say, you know, Poland, wow, this is a different part of the world completely. It's like shocking just from a weather and climate and, and language and all, all those aspects. So that's a little bit different. But if you're coming from North America, there's a chances are very high that you have a lot of set expectations. Unless you've really been watching my show a ton, unless you've done like all kinds of research, uh, and even then it's very difficult because of the amount of disinformation that is out there, amount of misinformation, both. And, it, and one of the tools that we kind of use to explain that, and here we say it jokingly, but we're, we're actually serious. We're often accused, if you will, by people from North America of being the third world. And you'll see people make comments about it. Oh, I don't want to live in the third world. How can you stand living in the third world, blah, blah, blah. So the original, so Nicaragua is as solidly third world as you can reasonably get. Although it's talking about joining BRICS, which will take it into the second world and change everything. But traditionally, Nicaragua is one of the founders of the non-aligned movement. And what the non-aligned movement was and has always been is a refusal to simply become a vassal state of the United States or a vassal state of Russia, basically sitting out the Cold War and playing it from the sidelines. All right, the rain's picking up quite a bit. I'm gonna step into the, the rain shadow of the tree here. Hopefully the light stays acceptable on me for this. Let's see, oh, there we go, perfect. Look at that. This is, oh, this is a solid rain. Hold on, we gotta take it out. That's a nice, nice rain coming down there. And I can go underwater if I need to, right? I love that. I'm, I'm getting wet, but I don't care. So the third world referred to these countries that were just gonna sit it out. They refused to play the Cold War game and it wasn't about you know us against them. And a lot of the countries that did that, coincidentally, were on the poorer side. Not all, Switzerland, for example, also a third world country by definition, um, and, and sat it out and played neutral. Uh, Nicaragua is one of the original countries that was very much like we are not like we're, we're we do things with the U.S. We're, we're friendly with Russia, but we're not a vassal state, right? We're just not going to play that game. Um, and so Nicaragua has been both pretty poor for most of the Cold War era, and or all of it really, and absolutely unaligned. That combination has made it the poster child for being third world because third world used to mean non-aligned and over time came to mean poor because of the association. So most people just think it means poor. But Nicaragua, more than most places, kind of takes pride in being third world. It means something here. It's They put effort into it. It's intentional, right? Some places fell into it, but not here. They meant to be third world. They've always meant to be third world. So that's the first thing. But Americans tend to use it and Canadians tend to use it in this very negative sense. Oh, the third world. Like they're too good for it. But it's important to remember, there's the wind, hopefully the, the, the noise of all this. There's a lot of water hitting the camera, like it's soaked, but I've got the, the hydrophobic lens. This is the GoPro 11 that I'm on right now. So it, it pretty much just keeps on trucking, even from an image perspective, which go GoPro, right? People wonder why I, I put so much into my GoPro system and this isn't it, but these are all benefits, right? The biggest thing is their online storage. I couldn't do this show if GoPro wasn't uh, providing me with that service. I pay for it, but I get so much use out of it. They're losing money on me. Thank you, GoPro. Um, so uh, uh, there, there's this very much, you know, it, oh, we're, we're too good for you. It feels that way. But Nicaraguans are like, this is who we want to be, right? We're not, oh boy. Get a little bit more coverage here. That, now it's a lot of rain, like a lot, a lot. You could, yeah. So it's getting louder and louder. 
One of the things that we use, though, as kind of a tool for discussing what this is like is we actually refer, in, in many cases, to the United States especially, as being the fourth world. And what we mean by that is really looking at the United States from a, okay, we got to go in, this is too much, we're going to be right back. Well, the rain's at least a little bit lighter now. That was, that was a lot. So when we're referring to the United States as the fourth world, it doesn't take too much to really understand why we might say this. Let's think about the things, aside from being the U.S. and Russian aligned, obviously no one's more first world than the United States when the definition is aligned with the U.S. Although one could argue the U.S. is not very U.S. aligned anymore. That would be kind of a, a esoteric argument or that would be an existential crisis for the country. But when we're talking about income and quality of life and those kinds of things, when we really think about what makes a country first or third world, most people, when they sit down and start thinking about that, are going to say things like, well, a first world country should be a place where there is quality of life. You're able to afford to eat well, have access to healthy food. You shouldn't have to worry about living in food deserts. Uh, Health care should be quality and available. People should not have to work outrageous numbers of hours. You should have uh, plenty of free time to enjoy life. Uh, basically, people should be happy and healthy, and the country should be doing what it can to support that from building good roads, providing good internet, having good laws, and protecting the people. When we look at the U.S. versus Nicaragua, or a lot of the third world, in these specific categories, it doesn't take much to say, wait, how is the U.S. being listed as the first world country when it falls dramatically behind these other places in these specific areas? Just today, we saw the news that three more hospitals are closing in Alabama, leaving people counties, entire counties, without necessary medical care for things like childbirth. There's all kinds of major healthcare crises going on in the United States, all while Nicaragua has plenty of healthcare coverage and is building loads of brand new hospitals because it's investing in improving healthcare while the U.S. is actively dismantling their healthcare system. It's actually moving backwards. There's huge strikes. There are strikes in the United States of larger areas than all of Nicaragua without health care, right? Just in the last weeks. It's, uh, it's wild living here and seeing things function and then seeing the United States and seeing how dysfunctional things are there. It really is absurd to live here and have people refer to this as the third world when you know, and it's not like we just see it in the news. I, I grew up in the United States. I'm aware of what things are like. When we go back there, it is very obvious that we are taking a step back in so many things. There's some things, of course, that the U.S. has great mastery of. There's some things that are better, and, and certainly they're leading some ways, especially in things like litter and trash control. However, mostly they solve that by putting it on barges and sending it to other places to let other people deal with it. And one has to wonder, which is the more advanced country, the one who is creating the trash or the one who's willing to deal with it? Now, it's a, again, esoteric question, but the areas where the United States leads don't tend to be that strong. The areas where they trail tend to be really dramatic. They're out there waging wars, sometimes for good reasons, we believe, although it's hard to say, many times for certainly very bad ones. When is the last time Nicaragua or most third world countries waged an international war or even an internal one unless it was for survival, right? Protecting themselves from being taken over. The idea that you have to constantly be at war, that you're not going to have health care, that the country does not provide good public transportation or a safe living environment. And that's a huge one. The safety levels, while the U.S. is not a dangerous country, it's not a safe one either. It falls in the middle, whereas Nicaragua unlike many of the countries that you would think of as a third world, is very safe. So it doesn't take very much at all to see how Nicaragua is without really any argument in a totally different and higher category than the United States. The one argument that people make is, well, but Americans earn a lot more money. That's really a marketing tactic because while earning more money may sound good, if it costs a lot more to live, it doesn't mean what you think it means. And the number of Americans who are homeless or living below the survival line or at risk 
of not being able to get health care, of not being able to get healthy food is, is quite high compared to Nicaragua. There are many more Nicaraguans who are struggling, but those that are at the, at the brink of collapse is actually fewer. So it's, it's a hard one to say exactly how that works. There's no question that Nicaragua is a much poorer country, but the cost of living is so high in the United States that you have to be insanely rich compared to almost any country on earth to live in the United States. And that means that the quality of life ends up being very low and it makes it very difficult to consider the U.S. as a candidate for the first world. It doesn't really meet any reasonable qualification that one would expect to be required. Now, Nicaragua doesn't make any claims to being first world, but that's what leaves us with, well, then the United States must be the fourth world. And that's why we use that term, because we're not trying to say that Nicaragua is a first world country. It's not. And we're very proud, for the most part, of being a textbook example of the third world. We're proud of that neutrality. And to some degree, we're proud of the struggle that happens here. And we're all here trying to make a difference together as a society. I'm very proud to be an active participant in that. But there's no reasonable way to look at the United States. If you live here and know what the United States is like, to call it a first world country is so a joke. There's no way that an American could say they're in a first world country unless they are unaware of what other countries are like. And even then, casual research tells them something is very wrong. So we use that term, fourth world, very meaningfully because it denotes something important. It's not about us. It's about what we're often being compared to. So when you're looking at Nicaragua or elsewhere, many other countries are going to have similar stories to tell. I'm just telling this one. Uh, when you're coming from one of those countries that takes great pride in being first world and brags about it and uses the term third world to put others down, stop and think for a minute. Is that really true that they have some leg up on the competition? Or are they desperately trying to find some way to make others look bad? Instead of doing a good job on their own, instead of providing you good health care, instead of providing you honest guidance from the Department of the State Department, instead of putting good public transportation in place or having a good legal system that actually protects you, they're skipping all that because it's way cheaper and easier to just make names and blame other people and try to make everyone else look bad instead of trying to make yourself look good. Because as a country, you only have 180 or so other competitors. Sometimes it's just way easier to try to make everyone else look bad and by comparison you look better than actually doing a good job. But I implore you, consider going out and exploring the world, whether it's Nicaragua or Spain or Vietnam. Go find a place that is different, explore, expand your worldview and see if you agree that the United States should maybe not get to call itself the first world. But I don't think we want them here with us in the third world either. They need their own category. Let me know down in the comments what you think. As always, ask your questions. Today was kind of a rant in a little bit, a uh, little way, and I'm gonna have a little bit more of uh, uh, the story on the, the web hosting um, after our, our closing comments. Uh, but if you would like to support the channel, you can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. Uh, as always, share on social media, post this link somewhere, let people know about the show. It's a glorious rainy day. I'm very wet, but it feels great. I am going to get that edit out for you guys, and I will see all of you tomorrow. For those who are sticking around, the web hosting saga that has been going on, I did post a short about this, but some people don't see the shorts. So two and a half months ago, more than at this point, more than two and a half months ago, uh, we had this customer, and I've told the story, right, that, that w w we have a web hosting company and they really awful customer. We were really glad to see them go. They only paid us $11 a month. Someone actually said, I thought you meant 11,000. This was over $11. I'm like, yes, an actual $11 United States, a $10 bill and an extra one. That's how much money we're talking about. They put up this huge fight, argued, lied about stuff, were so dishonest and just rotten people, like truly. And every person we dealt with, there's not like a nice owner and a bad manager. It's not like that. Every person we dealt with, absolutely atrocious people at this company. And uh, uh, they decided that they were going to move their web hosting to another company, not because they didn't think that they had really good web hosting or a good price, just out of spite, right? And they, we had all that documented. They said, oh, this saved them. It was so much better, such a huge improvement. 
and for years, no problems, no problems. And then suddenly, oh no, we told you we were gonna move. We're like, no, you didn't. The company that they said they were moving to said, no, we don't even provide that service. They lied to you about us. They put in all this paper, well, we verified we have access. We've done all of our due diligence. We're, we did so much to make sure they were okay. And then we offered them their money back. We're like, okay, you prepaid, but we'll give you your money back. No harm, no foul. And we'll shut you down at the end of the end of the month. And they're like, no, shut us down now. He's like, well, if we're ordered to shut you down, we don't have a choice in the matter, right? Turn them off. And we thought, well, that's smart. You turn it off early. And if something goes wrong, you turn it on before your contract's up. They never looked at their contract. They never looked at the website for the duration of the contract. Went to the end, no website. Of course, the website went down. They never contacted a web host. They literally thought the universe was supposed to host their websites and make them a website. They didn't have a copy of it. I mean, they were the source of it. They threw it away. They don't know what a web host is. So they don't know who to talk to. They hired an IT company. The IT company admitted they don't know what a web host is. Their CIO doesn't know what a web host is. Like, this is the most helpless thing. And one of the things is they kept lying about these staff members. Well, now they're too embarrassed to say anything. Uh, the owner's too embarrassed to reach out and say, we screwed up. They can't hire a junior IT professional. They can't hire a high school student. Let's just be clear about this. The average freshman in a high school could solve this problem for them in, let's say, an hour. This is ridiculously easy. I'm not saying that there's no one who would be challenged by this. I'm saying that the number of people who could solve it are they're myriad, right? And they're everywhere. And everyone's related to someone. Everyone knows someone. Everyone crosses someone on the street who would do this for almost no money in minutes. For, for two months, the website was completely down, just down, just an error code when you went to it. Then they finally, somebody managed to create a WordPress install for their site after two months, but they broke it. So it's a non-working, halfway complete WordPress install. So it doesn't say the name of their business. It didn't say anything. It says, welcome to WordPress, delete this when you install it, and it's all messed up because it's broken. And that is it. And it's been that way for two more weeks. So two and a half months, over $11, this business has appeared to be out of business to its customers with no end in sight, no changes being made. If someone was working on that site and just didn't worry about people seeing them working on it, because why would they, right? Because it's been down for two and a half months. It can't get worse than this unless someone put like porn up instead. So they're as they are already at worst case scenario and and they're not working on it. So, you know, if someone was in the process of trying to improve it, if someone was trying to learn what to do, we would see that happening, right? And we're just looking at their website out of curiosity. It's also funny that before doing this by, I don't know, six or 12 months, I don't really know the time frame. they had a company that did their social media and they decided they didn't understand what social media was and they got angry that it existed. They're kind of like crazy, uh, demented people, right? And they just reached out to their social media provider and told them not that they were firing them, but demanded that they delete all of their social media accounts. So they have no Facebook, they have no Instagram, they have no nothing. It's not like, you know, here in Nicaragua, companies have uh, have those things, Facebook and Instagram, and often don't have a website. Like many people don't even know what a website is. Like they know the words, but when you say go to a website, they're completely unclear what you mean. So we understand here that there's alternatives and social media often serves as a, as a proxy for having a webpage, but they're in the United States where that is absolutely not the case. But even if it was, they deleted all of that. So there's no backup. They really look like they went out of business. They have no way to list their phone number.